I just figured out how to import data from Google Contacts to go into your CRMs through make.com. That may sound very simple to do, but there are some extra steps that you need to take to properly activate this inside of make.com. So if you've been struggling with getting this set up or don't like reading manual written instructions, then you've come to the right place. Let's get to it. Solve Cycle Solutions. If you're new here, I help save people time by automating the work that they hate doing with no code and AI based solutions. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build Google API connections that allows you to share data from your own contacts to be imported into your CRMs with make.com. So let's dive right in and I want to break this down as quick as I can. The goal of this particular automation that I want is that every time someone gets added to my Google contacts list, they get imported into smart suite where my CRM is. So I'm going to pull these up real quick, just so you can see, we're just going to create this when you're trying to set up most normal modules inside of something like make, all you have to do is you'll have this connection. You'll see that I have a few things set up already. I'll talk about those once we get there, but I'm going to set this up as an example account, and I'm going to try and sign in with my uh, test Google account. So I have an Eric Harkness works at Gmail. It's one of my older email accounts. We're going to see which one pops up first. So I'm going to hit this one. Be sure to blur out some of the other ones as well, but once this is connected, it allows us, and you'll see that it's saying that it's giving us permission or it's giving make permission to see and download the contacts. So in theory, this should work where if I set this up and I can hit OK here, and we specifically want to look for whenever a new contact gets added from now on. This is going to run. It is a polling trigger, so that means it's going to check every intermittent time that we set. So in this case, it's currently set to run every 15 minutes. I'm going to have it run just as a trigger when we're ready to test it. So to see how this should work, we should have a, a fake contact we can put in. You see, I put in test McTest space, has a fake phone number, fake email, business website, all this information. When I hit save, I should be able to come back here and hit run once. And you'll see that even though we have the permission and we have the contact that's submitted, it's still not actually pulling things up. So what does this mean? Is it, does it mean that make is broken or is it that there's something else going on that we need to do? You probably already know this, but it means there's something more that we need to do. And like I said, at the beginning of this video, originally I didn't understand how this was working and I had to build this in Zapier instead. But now that I know what to do, we should be able to get this working properly. And I wanted to make a video here just because I couldn't, I didn't see anybody providing this kind of information when I was figuring this out. So one thing that you may, you may be able to see on my screen here, but underneath where it has the example account, it says for more information on how to create a connection to Google contacts, see online help. If we pull that up, it's going to pull up the basically documentation inside of make that shows some very detailed instructions on how to go about this. It looks a lot more confusing than it actually is, but I'm going to walk through this entire example here and show you how to build this yourself so that you can follow these instructions or watch the video. I'll put the instructions in the video as well, but basically we've gone ahead and made this connection, but we need to do something extra here and that's create and configure a Google Cloud Console project for Google Contacts. So this is the homepage for the Google Cloud Console. As you can see, there's lots of different things that you can do here. So much of these things I am actually not as familiar with, so I'll be playing around with this as well. But the main thing that we need to do to get started is click this tab here that says select a project. You'll see there's nothing currently set up and we just need to hit select a project. 
and you need to put, you'll see here that this says that I have a, a project quota. So this, my understanding is that this can be a charge service. So do be careful with that. But for now, we should be fine just having this one small thing set up. There may be certain additional things you can do inside of this project, but I'm not entirely sure where the limits are on this yet. So just keep that in mind and be careful. I can just need to change this to uh, a specific type project name for us. I'm going to put make integration and we can hit create. And then once that's submitted, we can then hit, that's going to take a minute to pull this up and we can pull up the make integration project. We can then open the navigation menu on the left hand side and you'll see there's a tab for API and services. We're going to click this. What we need right now is we just need to get a, uh, what's called an OAuth consent started. And we're going to be able to build our own API and get the specific code that we can then share with make that will give us the permission to extract contact information. So let's hit this third or fourth from the bottom uh, tab that says OAuth consent. And you'll see that it's just asking for a couple pieces of information, clarifying what um, we're registering this as an app. So it's, it's trying to just verify some specific information here. I'm going to hit external because this is a external from outside of Google's account. We're going to hit create. And then again, we're going to just put in a lot, some basic information here. So I'm going to put make integration again. I'm going to put my email that will show up there. And then all we need to do is scroll down. Uh, we do need to have, we do need to have another email here. And then the other thing that we need to do is we need to add what are called authorized domains. So this is clarifying that information from make through these specific make domains are permitted to go through. This information is all set up here in these steps. And all it is specifically in this case is make.com and integramat.com. So I'm going to hit OK or add domain. And then we're going to hit paste in Integramat, and then we can hit save and continue. Sometimes the next step can take a couple of minutes, uh, depending on your internet or your computer processing and everything you're doing on it. But the next step is adding what are called scopes. And you'll see here, it says scopes express the permissions you request users to authorize for your app and allow your project to access specific types of private user data from their Google account. So this is basically just you can go back into the make uh, count and you'll see that it's asking for the specific uh, scope of the data that we're looking for. So in this case, it's asking for contacts, says contacts read only, directory and contacts other. So these are all the aspects of the contact data that we're looking to extract from our Google account. And you'll see that there's lots of different things here uh, that can be added we just have to go down the bottom where it says manually add scopes and paste these contacts here. And you can either add a comma or a space to differentiate the specific scopes that we're looking for. And then from there, all we have to do is hit update and then save and continue. Everything here is set up and we're ready to go. You could go back to the dashboard if you want, but the next step that we need to do is we need to create Google contacts, client credentials. So in this case, we are going to just hit this credentials tab, which is the third uh, from the top on this left-hand side menu. We'll give that a minute to load. And we're going to hit create credentials up at the top here. Specifically, what this is looking for is OAuth client ID. So this is the particular ID that we need to connect inside of make.com. And it's going to ask a couple pieces of information to clarify what kind of permissions we're looking to create. 
And in this case, we just need to hit web application. Again, you can put whatever you want for this name to make sure that you know what it is. And then from there, we just need to add an authorized redirect URI that is listed inside of the instructions here from the, the make details. So all we have to do is hit this and we're all set here. Just double check one thing that we have everything. And then the last thing that's gonna happen, it's gonna take a minute to create the information that we need, but it's going to produce the, the client ID and client secret. So this is acting as uh, si similar like with APIs, it has the API key and API secret. This is kind of the same thing. Obviously this is an example that I'm going to burn after using this video. So make sure that you keep this information secret. Everything got set up as intended, but there was one thing that I forgot to do, and this will help prevent an issue of um, setting up risks uh, for sharing your data. And that is basically allowing the APIs for contacts. So we need to go into the APIs and services. We're going to look into the library. And then from here, we're going to search for a very specific term, and that is Google People API. And you'll see that there's a couple of things here. There was originally contacts, it says this API is no longer being developed. You wanna click the Google API, ignore that it says Enterprise API. And from here, we're going to enable this. So this kind of just turns everything on and allows us to share this information safely. So this is all set up now. One other thing I do want to point out just because I was having some issues with this um, and realized it was just a very small, annoying typo. Um, when you are adding specifically the URI here for the redirect, uh, I had accidentally clipped this here so that it just did not have that last backslash. You do need that because that is going to cause a fail if you don't have that set up. Annoying as it is. So now that we have everything properly set up and saved, uh, you can set the limit for whatever you want here. Actually, let's go ahead and just create this new final Google connection here. So in this case, it's gonna be example Harkness Works. So I know to delete that later. We're gonna toggle on show advanced. And so this is where you're going to see the, the client ID that we created earlier, as well as the client secret. This is where we're going to be pasting that info here. So I'm going to set that here and I'm going to paste that. There is also a space here. So I'm going to delete that. We're going to hit sign in with Google. There's been a little bit of additional testing uh, that the integration hasn't gone through, even though we've updated and enabled the API. So I'm testing this one more time to make sure this works. I basically went back and re recreated a new OAuth uh, credential. So I'm going to see if this works now and so that you can see that and you know moving forward, this is the step you need to take versus um, having this uh, go through. So this is showing that the app hasn't been verified even though we've enabled the API. Um, in this case, I am going to say go to Integromat because, again, this is just an example that I'm building. So it looks like there are some additional steps that can be taken to remove the screen. And it looks like this just needs to be submitted for verification. I will say that I did not have this exact issue with my, um, my own paid Google accounts, so that might be something that differentiates this. But for now, I am going to hit just go to Integromat and hit continue and allow this to continue. And then we're all set. Like I said, this may be because this was a free Gmail account, that that's why there's additional security here. So do be careful with that specifically. But now what you'll see is we can go from a specific date 
I'm going to set this for yesterday so that we can pull up that new contact that was initially added, the test McTest space. So what I will do here is uh, we have, I'm going to run this as a test and basically just make sure that this contact is pulling up. And you'll see that we have all the information for that new contact, the test McTest face, see that the family name is given as a last name, given name is first name. And there's a lot of different info that we can be sharing here from the business website. And this will allow us to map all this data inside of SmartSuite now. As you can see, contact information has all been mapped to the exact places that we want. So I can hit this run once again, and it's gonna come back and saying that there's no new data. So let's go ahead and just uh, go back to adding a new contact, and then we're gonna submit it and run it through SmartSuite, and you can see the finished product once that's set up. Final test here is that I have a completely new person. I'm putting in Mark No Name, all their info here. So I'm going to hit Save. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hop over to the contacts because once this is set up, Google Contacts will know, or Make will know to go search Google Contacts for anyone recently added from the last time this automation was run. So we should have this go in and map to smartsuite.com. So let's see. And look at that. All the information was pulled out. We have Mark's info pulled up here, and the record was created inside of SmartSuite. So this was a database that I had set up here, and you'll see that Mark, uh, his info was added. It looks like there may have been some things that I improperly mapped, but this is all set up now so that the contacts are directly importing from whenever I meet people at networking events from my contact list without having to do all the manual work or putting in their business cards as well. So that in a nutshell is how you can start integrating things with Google APIs and some extra steps you may have to take if you're using something like make.com to permit very specific data from the Google account that you have. I hope you got a ton of value out of this and don't get discouraged if you do get stuck in this like you saw from how I tried to go through. There were some complications even though I set this up in 10 minutes with my own Google account or with my own paid Google account. So keep that in mind. But if you do get stuck, please consider booking a free call with me. It is a free 30 minute consultation where I can walk you through getting this all set up. Or if you have other automated questions that you're looking to try and streamline or offset in your business, I'd love to give you a help there. So head to solvecyclesolutions.com forward slash 30 dash minutes or scan the QR code floating to my, to my right, your left. So that's everything for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you found this helpful to get more content like this and feel free to leave any questions or comments you have in the comment section of this video. So that's all I have to say on this topic and thank you so much. This is where I stop.